Hey, and welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast, a podcast for people who want to get no BS information about fitness and know that fitness is about so much more than losing scale weight. It's about feeling confident in your skin and empowered in your life. I'm your host, Tura Virta, personal trainer, strength and nutrition coach, and most of all, a husband of my beautiful wife, Miriam. Each week, my guests and me will give you some no BS fitness tips and motivate you to take action in your own personal fitness journey as we talk about nutrition, exercise, mindset, personal development, and executing in life with enjoyable but still effective strategies. If your goal is to look better, feel, and be strong, and experience transformation from inside out, you, my friend, are in the right place. Thank you for jumping in, and now let's jump into today's episode. So welcome to Fit Me to Rock Fitness Podcast. Today I have amazing guest, uh, Brian O'Keefe. And uh, Brian has a pretty awesome story, uh, own personal journey, what he has been able to do. So uh, before I don't want to tell any details, so I want that uh, Brian is telling uh, with his own words what he has been able to do. So Brian, first of all, welcome to my show. And, uh, and uh, if you... To introduce yourself, uh, what you are doing, a uh, little bit about your background story, where you are living, it's just the normal stuff uh, first, and then uh, let's uh, go into fitness chat. Yeah, thanks, Jura. So, uh, yeah, about, well, I was obese for about 15 years, and uh, about 18 months ago, I, I moved away, uh, cut off all communication with everyone I know, and uh, moved to the kind of wilderness in Mallorca, and uh, you know, one of the Balearic Islands, and uh, got started on, on losing weight. And uh, yeah, you know, seven and a half months later, I lost uh, 63 kilos or 10 stone as we Ireland. And uh, then just uh, got, f- flew home to, to Ireland and recorded the reaction of all my family and friends who didn't even know I was coming home, not to mind the fact that I had lost any weight. Um, and so that, that video went viral uh, uh, about, about six, seven months ago. And since then, I've been helping people lose weight, you know, do the same journey I did um, as an online coach, which has been quite a change, but very fulfilling, very lucky to be able to do it. Awesome. Uh, this is uh, it's uh, incredible. So, what made you what made you move? Like, what was the what was the reason why you when was the point for you that you said that now it's time to do the change? Let's go a little bit for those reasons why you started doing it. Yeah. So, well, I'd actually moved to Mallorca about uh, a year before I started my journey um, in order to try and lose weight. Uh, I was working remotely online. And so uh, my brother lived in Mallorca. And so I had the opportunity while he wasn't there in the winter to live in his in his house or his uh, flat uh, for a few months. And uh, so I moved out there, started working, got two months into it, had lost maybe 15 kilos and uh, lockdown happened again. My gym shut down and I uh, just put on all the weight, all 15 kilos, probably put on 20, 25 over the next nine months. Um, and so, yeah, so November 2021, I uh, I was listening to a podcast, just walking my dog, and it was by a guy, a Hollywood actor who called Ethan Suplee, who's lost like 400 pounds. And I can't remember anything he said in the podcast, except for one thing. He said, why don't we analyze our failures? He said, you know, when we have good weight loss habits in place, you know, we get three weeks or a month into it and then all of a sudden it falls apart. Why don't we analyze like what is the reason that this happens? And this I had had like maybe 15, 20 times in my life where I'd gotten a month or two months in to a journey and uh, and then just quit. And it just hit me like a lightning bolt. And I said, uh, okay, I know my failures. And so there were, there's, there was three. It was, it was, uh, going out drinking with my friends. That was, that was a big one. Um, then it was the access to food delivery apps. So I, I would eat food delivery like six, six nights a week. And the other one was going out eating with my family. And so I started kind of concocting a plan on how do I uh, make sure that these things don't get in the way if I have another journey in place how do I make sure that you know once I've got these good weight loss habits in place how do they not get in the way and so that's when I moved out uh, to the middle of nowhere in in Mallorca and uh, cut off all communication with my family and friends and got to work 
Wow. No, this is this is something. Was it was it something like that you had to do like so dramatic thing like what was going on like uh, obviously that was the first step to know like from your failures in the past and you did you feel at that time that you had to do like that kind of uh dramatic cut for to get taking like all your past environment away from your that to help you yeah uh, like so absolutely you know i i had tried and failed at weight loss for for 15 years you know i mm-hmm. i tried everything i'd had keto diets i had there's a famous uh, weight loss tv show in ireland it's kind of like ireland's version of the biggest loser and i had at different points the pt from that tv show and the doctor from the tv show oh, wow. <laughs> like super expensive i had a gastric balloon inserted into my stomach in 2018 and um, didn't work like everything was like one step forward three steps back um and so uh what what i just i was just kind of sick of it i was just every night i'd go to bed and i'd be saying you know tomorrow has to change i wouldn't be able to sleep you know i'd put a plan together for an hour in my head about what i'm going to do tomorrow and then i'd wake up in the morning and do nothing about it i'd just pile mm-hmm. more calories into my face and so it was just getting to the point where okay i have to do something different something extreme and so it was listening to that podcast that i said okay i'm going to move out into the middle of nowhere and that was the first step i hadn't decided to cut off my family and friends yet at that stage Mm -hmm. i just moved to the middle of nowhere and when i got there i started reading um i started an audio book of david goggins's book can't hurt Mm me um and that changed my perspective completely so I I you know I'd always tried to make weight loss as easy as possible I fit it into my life as comfortable as I could you know okay uh you know I don't I'm I'm not going to do too much exercise or I'm not going to push myself to be uncomfortable because it's already uncomfortable weight loss and kind of Goggins's book is very much about pushing yourself to be uncomfortable it's like okay well I've tried everything why don't I just try and push mm-hmm. myself to be more and more uncomfortable every single day and and that's what I did and and it works wow uh, but what was the what was like obviously it was was there something like that you you said that you were trying it like for a long time you have been obese like for 15 years right yeah and uh and uh was it like a, what was the point that made you was it just about that book it was just a single decision that now it's time to do it or was there something else what happened past that uh, what made you make to that step actually so to, uh, like like i said it was every night i like i wanted it more than anything you know every night i'd be in bed like saying i, I want it more than anything um and you know i was getting to the point i was like okay i think i was 33 and uh i was like you know am i ever gonna do it and uh yeah i just like the thing about it's so hard when you fail so many times it's so hard to get started again like that fear of failure um you just start trying to give up so i was like if i start again i just cannot let anything get in the way and so that that's why i kind of built on this plan over the course of a month and um but there wasn't like there wasn't really any one particular, you know, incident that happened. Like there was loads of incidents over years. It was just every day I wanted it more. I, I wanted it and I wasn't doing it. And it was really starting to affect, you know, my mental health. That like, you know, I was happy 90% of the time, but the 10% I was unhappy. I was absolutely miserable at all. I was consumed by the fact that I was obese. Um, I couldn't meet new people. You know, there was, um, yeah, there was just a, a lot of, um, kind of mental anguish going on with it um and i just and then like like most people who are obese you think about it all the time and so uh it wasn't any one particular like moment it was like just listening to that podcast and and him saying uh, as soon as i heard him say you know why don't we analyze our failures it really just hit me i was like that's what i've never done i've never analyzed the reasons why i'd have good habits in place and then i'd lose them and if i get the good habits in place and don't lose them then it's a matter of time before the weight loss is gone and so that was the kind of the real moment for me when i when i heard that i was like holy shit i can do this um if i if i if i make sure that nothing gets in the way yeah no because this is and this is i think it's it's if you like uh, now you as you are a coach that this is the one of the most common mistakes what people are doing like that they are just kind of trying to find the next method next Mm. way of uh, dieting or losing weight but they never take time to actually analyze what they have done why they have because it's it's obviously there is a fear of failure also but that you never look back what you have actually done and why 
you fail by it made like because it's it's if you really think it it's it's uh, just that basically those failures they are if you take them as a lessons they give yes. you feedback why you have failed if there was something like a, like you mentioned uh, keto or something if that is something that you can't imagine to do for next five to ten years even you might be losing weight you are not going to have that success it's not going to solve your problems you might be Absolutely. good at losing weight but it's not going to help you to maintain it so until you have a method or system that is working for you not for someone else in in some tv competition where you might get motivated for a short period of time or doing some kind of intermittent fasting if you see that somebody is uh, is uh, doing and getting getting good results looking good and then they are recommending that for you and yeah. uh, that is that is like it's so hard to recognize but uh, i love you that sharing that story story coming from you so was there what kind of methods you started them to use like uh, what was it like what were like your um, like let's go back to like your methods what do you what you learned that didn't work for you what caused so you to fail yeah so, so so it was it was three things it was uh going out drinking with my friends it was uh going out eating with my family my family live all over the world so we'd always whenever we meet up we'd go and go out eating and I'd, i wasn't able to control myself in front of like some delicious menu at a restaurant mm -hmm. and uh the main one was food delivery apps because you can be disciplined for 23 hours and 59 minutes of a day but you have one minute of ill discipline and i would have like 5,000 calories at my door and that's not an exaggeration you know my my max McDonald's order was 35 euro. You can basically mm -hmm. cl clean out a McDonald's for 35 euro, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so they, they were the kind of the, the main, the main failures that, that I needed to, to get out of my life and like just build a, a better relationship with food. And then when it came to, you know, putting, putting the plan in place, I, like I had known for 10 years, maybe that a calorie deficit is all that matters to lose weight. Like I knew that now I would still go after the shiny new thing, like whether it was keto or intermittent fasting or all these things, thinking that, that, that there was some magic pill involved. Um, and I, and I still went after them and I still tried them, but, um, but really, uh, I, I knew that I just needed to, to maintain a calorie deficit because like weight loss is very simple it's maintain yeah. a calorie deficit it's not easy no, it's just very no. simple and yeah. it's it's easy because it's maintain a calorie deficit and it's and i it, oh, sorry it's simple because you want to maintain a calorie deficit but it's difficult because you have to maintain the deficit yeah. and yeah. so that's where i tried to concentrate of building discipline and that's where the goggins book came in about pushing myself to be uncomfortable mm -hmm. So it was deduced then uh, what was those actionable steps, what you actually started to do, like uh, what was the first steps like when you found that, okay, now I might be starting to believe that this is that calorie or you knew that it's that calorie deficit. So what were the actual steps, what you started to do? Yeah, so I didn't try and, um, you know, reduce reduce my calories massively initially. What I just started to do is I, I was like, okay, let's just get an, a small exercise habit in place. And, you know, at 155 kilos, all I could do was walk. And yeah. so I started building that up. I'd walk my dog 30 minutes a day. And over two weeks, I built that up to 90 minutes a day of, of walking. And then uh, after two, so I, what I decided after that is I just want to keep on adding. I don't want to like switch things up. I, I want to add to what I've I was doing so I had my two weeks of uh, or so my 90 minutes of walking then I added in weightlifting uh, a push pull legs program six days a week and I had really enjoyed lifting weights as a teenager I played kind of rugby at a decent level in Ireland and so I, I had enjoyed that so I was like that so that's what I added in next as a six day push pull legs program and then I started tracking my calories and so oh. I stuck with the 2,200 calorie uh, diet with uh, about 200 grams of protein, which I thought was about right for, for me because I, I, I had consumed knowledge for years. And, and so I kind of had a, I wouldn't say an expert, but I had an intermediate kind of level of, of kind of knowledge on what was probably required to maybe do some body rec recomposition while I was losing weight and stuff like that. So that's why I, I kept my protein intake high. Um, and so uh, that, so that was, that was week three was adding in the, the uh, weightlifting and the uh, calorie deficit. Week four was starting the couch to 5k app on top of that. So I started yeah running three times a week. Um, 
and then I had tried the Couch 5K app a, a few times before, but I'd always, after about two, three weeks, I'd start to get real bad ankle stiffness and stuff like that. So I decided, okay, well, I'm just going to have to start stretching. And so I did 45 minutes a night of stretching in week four as well. And then week five, I added in three um, swims a week. And so I was doing 90 minutes of walking a day, six days of cardio a week, six days of weightlifting a week, 45 minutes of stretching every day. And so I built from zero exercise over the course of five weeks to about four or five hours of exercise a day, Um, which like I think is a bit too fast but yeah. but it's more more about the building and building and building and building which i try and do like with my clients as well i always like if you tried to go from that from zero to that on day one i think that is impossible you're going to quit yeah. almost immediately but it's about like building the habits and because i was very much into the david goggins kind of push myself as hard as possible at that stage um you know, I, I was able to maintain it. And then my focus was just 1% more every day. That that was all it was, whether I can get an extra rep out, an extra length in the pool, whether I could run an extra 100 meters. I run the same because Couch 5K is generally like t- the same three runs per week. So mm-hmm. can I do that run, you know, faster or even at a lower heart rate than I had done previously? So everything then became kind of very data driven for me. I was like always looking at what I'd done last and can I beat it? Wow. No, this is, it sounds like, uh, obviously at that point you were highly motivated. Yeah. So was there any point that you kind of lost your motivation or it was, it was your body was trying to tell you like that this probably now is getting too much. Oh, so many times, like so many times, um, you know, very, very early after, like in the first six weeks, my butt, like at a hundred, I was probably maybe down, I think I'd lost like 10, maybe 15 kilos. I can't remember. I lost a lot of weight very quickly. And so in the first six weeks, but my body, like I'd come home in the evening and I wouldn't have energy for anything other than to lie on the sofa, cook. And like, even if I had to go to the bathroom, I was like bent over like this hobbling towards the bathroom because my body was just like in 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 agony but uh i wasn't in like i hadn't injured myself at that stage it was just my body was like you know what the fuck is happening here you know <laughs> this yeah. is such a shock and uh so yeah and then like so then I, I would actually say i had low motivation the majority of my journey you know but i had built up the, the habits of doing it and i just i had a fear like an ungodly fear of losing them i knew i knew because that was the whole reason and I got out there and I was like, nothing can get in the way, just nothing. And yeah. and so I just I just kept kept going and and yeah, super low motivation, like at one stage. So I, I became very kind of mentally um crazy at some points. So, you know, I, I'd leave my like ego like really there like so I for at one point I, I injured my knee and it's it swelled up. This is about three months into my journey. It swelled like pretty big. And um I was like, I'm not gonna stop. And so I kept you know, heavy squatting on top of it. I kept running on it. Um, obviously not recommended. Um, Mm -hmm. but, uh, I was in the place where, you know, nothing is going to stop me here. And unless I need to go to hospital, I was going to keep on going. And like, interestingly, um, enough it went away after three weeks, but like, obviously that is not recommended for anyone listening, but, uh, I just, I just had put, got myself in a mental space where I will not be defeated. That was like my, um, that's how I thought it in my head. And like, I'd really, I kind of, I, I used to use these kind of mental tactics like that David Goggins would, would put in his book of like building up your ego, even if it's false. So like, um, you know, uh, I would think, you know, when I ran my first 5k, it was nine weeks after I started the couch to 5k and I was, uh, I was 21.5, about 135 kilos running a 5k. And in my head, I was like, you are the only motherfucker in the world who's 135 kilos and can run a 5k. And like, that might not be true, but that's mm-hmm. what was giving me this energy and feeding my, I'm going to do this no matter what. Um, and so using kind of mental t- tools like this even if they're kind of false was really beneficial for me um you know uh and so that's yeah that's so that's what i did and then so i kept on trying to after that point like add more and more on so i uh, so i finished my 5k at 135 kilos and then i had a thing called the 20 stone triathlon and 20 stone is 280 pounds which is uh, i'm not sure in kilos it's probably like you know 100 and yeah 20 25 maybe 125 28 kilos 
And uh, I wanted to do a triathlon. At, as I called it my 20 stone triathlon. And so I, I had been swimming, obviously, because I've been keeping that up and I've been running. So I thought, OK, cycling is the easiest bit. And so I did a, a triathlon at, at that weight in an hour and 47 minutes, which I think is the average wow. for, a, for a starter. A sprint triathlon, sorry, sprint triathlon, of course. Yeah. But at the average for the first time sprint triathlon, then that even like motivated me even more in my head. I was like, you're doing at this weight, you're doing what the average first time sprint triathlon does and so everything kept on feeding into more and more and like getting the reward of like being able to do these crazy kind of feats at my weight um and so that that just spun me on like motivated me even more but like they were the good days you know there was so many days where i just didn't like i'd I'd wake up in the morning and i'd spend an hour you know looking at my clothes or like planning my food and then replanning my food just so i wouldn't have to go to the gym you know there's so many days like that but i still always went I never missed a day. I didn't in seven and a half months. I didn't miss my calorie deficit once, and I didn't miss a, a day of exercise once. Oh, sorry, wow. I got the flu. I missed one day. I missed the flu, and then the next day, I uh, I doubled up my session to make up for it as a kind of a punishment. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that that was that's like a really really hardcore stuff, and it shows like your determination. <laughs> was there? Did you were you doing this all by yourself, or did you have some kind of uh, coach or someone who was kind of supporting you at this time, or? For the first three months, I did everything by myself, like everything. I, I, I had, uh, the push pull legs program was something I'd actually gotten from a friend in 2013. And I just pulled it out of my old Google Drive folder. Oh, yeah. And it was like a 16 week program. And it was kind of split into, it was kind of, kind of old school for modern standards but it was kind of split into a muscular endurance phase a hypertrophy phase a strength phase and then it would repeat um and so i like i like i said i wasn't talking to anyone on my journey and in fact i contacted a friend who didn't even know i wasn't talking to him because i wouldn't talk to him that much um you know he didn't even know i'd disappeared but he was a strength and condition coach for a professional rugby team and so i just texted him one question and i was like you know should i i'm doing this program i'm about to finish my 16 weeks should i go back into the endurance phase of the program or should I go straight back into a hypertrophy phase mm-hmm. and he this snowballed into him helping me but he still had no idea what I was doing he had no idea that I disappeared he, in fact it wasn't for another two months he met up another friend of mine and he's like oh I've been talking to Brian and my other friend is like what no one's talked to him no one's heard from him in five months um <laughs> but uh yeah so he did help me a little bit on programming especially as I was getting my running distances up at around you know I moved from like 5k to 10k and I was getting I was pushing towards a half marathon and he was helping me like manage my uh load on the on the weight training so that I wasn't going to you know put overdoing it um so that was useful definitely and I probably wouldn't have hit a half marathon as soon as I did um without his help but he was he was himself himself and my dad and my dad were the only two people I talked to my entire journey um my dad actually had dementia and so my mom I know I knew what days my mom wasn't in the house in the morning and so I would call my dad twice a week and tell him what I was doing but he would have forgotten by the time my mom got back so he wasn't able to share that I was losing weight and yeah so they, that was my kind of guilty pleasure and they're the only two two people I talked to but even even like I said that friend is the strength and condition coach he didn't know I was losing any weight he just knew I was going to the gym wow now it's it's such an inspiring story and uh example how you can do it like it was usually at this point like you know now like when you work as a coach like uh For most people, there are very few people who are able to do this kind of change without mm. uh, having some external support, guidance and accountability, because uh, you will have those days when you don't feel like doing anything. You want to quit. There is nothing else. You you try, start to find those excuses. And at that at that point, you usually you need someone to call you accountable. But uh, like at least you had your someone who you were able to talk about these things even then they it was just to put them out from your head right yeah it was it was useful I mean after I was already kind of three months in more actually three and a half months 16 weeks yeah by the time I, I talked to him so I, I was actually very confident I'd still get it through myself but not I definitely I had a level of pressure on me from I knew that once I got out there that the, uh, that this was it if I didn't do it this time 
Mm-hmm. There was ne- it was never going to happen. Yeah. So that kind of pressure, it can go two ways and be too much for someone. Or, but I, I fed into it and I, I used it to, to kind of motivate me. So I really felt like I would have gotten there anyway. I just probably wouldn't have gotten there as quickly. But I think for most people, they're not, you know, 99% of people can't just disappear, quit yeah. their job, disappear oh, yeah. from the world. And, you know, so uh, having having that level of accountability and support within the environment they're currently in, which is the key because there's so many environmental factors that can affect whether you're going to lose weight, like your relationship with your family and the triggers in your environment that I think having that level of support for someone who, um, you know, especially I had a little bit of experience in, and, you know, I consumed a lot of knowledge around nutrition and weight. So like, if you don't have any of that, I think it's almost impossible in your own environment to, without some support or at least very, very difficult, you know, the, the, and the statistics back that up. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, but then now, was it like always like that you said that you lost a lot of weight in the beginning, like, was there, did you face any kind of plateaus or when did you face them first time? Yeah. So like, yeah. And it was, it was super frustrating. Cause like, like I said, I hit my calorie deficit every day for, mm-hmm. for seven and a half months. And so I think my first plateau was maybe three or four months in because like my calorie, the deficit I was in was quite significant. Despite the fact I was eating 2,200 calories a day, I think at 155 kilos and exercising four hours a day, I mean, you're probably burning somewhere around 4,000 calories a day, oh, yeah. you know, naturally, um, or at least that would have been my total daily energy expenditure. So that's a massive deficit. And oh, so yeah. I, I was rocketing down like very quickly. I think, um, did I lose 20 kilos my first two months or 30 kilos, somewhere between 20, 30, 30 kilos my first two months, oh. which is, like crazy um but yeah i had a 10 day plateau at one point and a 12 day plateau at one point um and my rule was and i'd said this at the start if if i had plateau for 14 days at only at that point will i drop my calories and so at the 10 day plateau and i was getting so angry you know yeah. uh, i really was it was like why am i not losing weight and so but on the 11th day i dropped like i i used to measure in pounds i dropped like three three four pounds on the 11th day wow. and same after my 12 day plateau on my 13th day i dropped like yeah two and a half kilos something like that yeah. and so uh it wasn't until i was six months in that i had my first 14 day plateau and at that wow. stage, I knew I, I'd already been planning um, my kind of reappearance and like flying back and surprising everyone. And I knew I was close. And so I went to a quite significant deficit at that stage. I dropped to like 1,750 calories because I knew I'd only five, six weeks left before I was going to surprise everyone. And I had to be, you know, at, oh, well, I wanted to be uh, under... Um, uh, under 95 kilos that was that was the goal and uh so i went to a significant deficit for the last five weeks which was extremely tough and i probably wouldn't even be able to do it again i just had such a motivating factor of knowing i was going to shock everyone i knew that I, was, I managed to do it but i don't even think i'd managed to because like i ran a half marathon on 1750 calories um uh you know uh which was which was pretty tough yeah so was it then like when you when you hit obviously when you got back home you were you were able to reach your goal right or yeah. were you yeah so yeah. how was it then after that how you were able to maintain it did you get any setbacks did you have any setbacks or yeah yeah 100 percent. so i i maintained the kind of a 92 kilos mark for about three or four months and then you start like you know getting the social life back and you know you know especially the you know the first month i was like going out drinking a bit but uh you know with all my friends as a kind of a, a celebration uh but yeah i started and then i i decided stupidly that i want to go straight into a bulk you know i've been cutting for mm-hmm. you know oh, this yeah. amount of time and i went straight in bulk and i definitely overdid the bulk so i went Mm -hmm. up like six kilos between august and december um and then between december and about two months ago i added another 10 kilos Mm -hmm. so i was up like 15 kilos um between but but uh you know but i had kept it pretty much off i think six kilos increase from where i was was probably to be expected in some ways reintroducing Mm -hmm. kind of some of those stuff into my life 
but anyway, uh, so for the last two months, I'm back down six kilos again. And so I have another, you know, five kilos. I went back into a calorie deficit. And uh, yeah, so I have another probably, I'm running a marathon in September. So I have another probably five kilos, six kilos to lose by the time the marathon comes in September. Wow. So is this something, this is, it's, it's such an inspiring story. So is this uh, now as a, like you are as a coach, um, is this like now something what you, how you feel like at the moment now, like when you had that at the moment that you knew what is going to make you lose weight, but then kind of shifting that to something else, like, because obviously it depends on every person, how long you are able to be in a calorie deficit. It, it's, it's really hard. And it's also getting at some point impossible to stay in a deficit that you have to go to maintenance. And uh, like you said, that, that, it's so scary probably to go back starting to eat more and uh and because it's it's probably like what your body needs but mentally yeah. your your mind is telling that you can't do it or you have that fear of gaining everything back going back where you used to be yeah how did you overcome that struggle so well i actually i i love food like i love it um so i didn't have a huge problem uh increasing the calories a little bit um it was more for me I just wanted to maintain the exercise habits that was the key for me um and eventually it got to the point where I I wasn't able well I was maintaining my exercise habits but I I I had left the food go completely and that's why I started to like put on weight so I'd still be like running and go to the gym but I'd probably be eating like three and a half thousand calories a day um and so that's that's at the point where I started to kind of put on the weight so I can understand most people might struggle with um you know that fear of eating a little bit more and I see I do see that in clients after they finish their journey they're almost hesitant to go back to a maintenance calorie um level because they think oh i'm gonna you know go back up i i didn't have that problem uh i had the opposite problem of like i love food and uh, i wanted to enjoy my new kind of weight um and i just want to make sure i maintained my exercise habit as that was kind of my grounding point mm-hmm. and how did you start to add that food where you you said that you didn't track calories at the point when you raised your calories or it was just going a little bit step by step back or how did you, how did you yeah exactly like that I was going step by step back so if I was going out for a meal or something like that I'd probably eat like 2,000 calories and I wouldn't track it but I'd track it on the days that I didn't mm-hmm. but and like going for like 3,000 and you know uh, which 3,000 is about my my maintenance at that exercise level mm-hmm. um, and so um, yeah it was, th- it was those kind of me- meals out or then a night out drinking with my friends which obviously became more more common so the habits the kind of that I'd gotten rid of um, mm-hmm. and so there the habits again Again, that I had to I had to change in the last two months in order to get back down this this kind of five six kilos um uh yeah because uh I like and it's good to know your triggers that's super important you know uh, mine is definitely like because I'll go out drinking I'll be hungover and I'll eat crap food the next day you yeah. know or not crap food I don't think there's good and bad food but just uh, I'd eat poor amounts of of food um you know pizzas you know just very calorie dense stuff um, and so that that's that's what I've kind of gotten rid of in the last six months to get back to and and back to like tracking you know very very accurately. Um, I think when I'm when I'm kind of when I have this mental attitude of being almost like crazy with it, that's when I'm most successful. Everyone's different, but that for me, that's that's when I'm most successful. I'm like weighing everything, you know, and getting it into my fitness ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you feel at this point that you need to? uh to maintain everything do you need to track your calories or would you be able to do it without or is there coming those creeping kind of those old old habits in i think i would be able to do it without but i actually enjoy tracking calories it it just that having that level of control over it like the same way i track you know my my progression in the gym you know i'm I'm every day i'm checking what i did in the last session so can i push it this session can i get an extra rep out and so i just enjoy having that level of control over so i think i would be able to do it without um and like i have been able to do a few meals out like i live in marbella now i've moved from mallorca and uh my 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 mom lives here um 
and you know my my family come to visit quite a lot so i've had i've been able to lose weight despite having some meals out which was actually a big change for me because the meals out as i mentioned before were actually a huge trigger for me i wouldn't yeah. be able to control what i was having in the menu and so that's one thing that relationship with kind of going out and eating and that relationship has has really changed which is, which is great um because yeah I, ha- I had to change that if i was going to be successful yeah so what kind of uh then like physical changes and uh and uh just the mindset that shifts during this process like uh what how what what how have changed your life when you have now that ability to do like a lot of physical stuff uh how you feel like how you are training for a marathon and uh, you are yeah. doing triathlon uh how it have affected to your life Yeah, I mean, yeah, incredibly, you know, I I'm in a relationship now. Um, you know, I wasn't even able to even go up and talk to a girl uh, you know, for 15 years. Um, uh so like that's that's been a huge one. Um, you know, yeah, just feeling like um, you know, in my head I'd always considered myself this kind of athletic person because I know I mentioned like I'd played mm-hmm. like uh, a bit of rugby in my teens at a decent level and even at 150 kilos I was I considered and there was this cognitive bias or you know, um yeah, yeah, I just I just uh I th- still thought I was athletic and fit, even though I was 150 kilos. Yeah. So obviously wasn't the case, but that's, you know, the, how we trick ourselves. And so I, 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 I now kind of just have the confidence that I am that, you know, I, 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 you know, I can, I can run, you know, distances that most people can't, I can lift weights that most people can't. And so I feel like, um, you know, the a fit, healthy, you know, confident, you know, person um which which is like a far cry from where i was you know uh a year and a half ago um but yeah like uh, it's funny like that was my goal you know when a lot of people say when they start a, a weight loss journey that oh you, you have to be concerned about your health that has to be the number one goal if you're gonna mm-hmm. if you're gonna lose weight that wasn't my number one goal at all like it really wasn't my number one goal was to get back being being an, an athlete like competing in in mm-hmm. sport pushing myself to to be better um and really to achieve something that no one thought I could that was my goal you know I'd failed so many times and no one thought I could achieve it I knew that you know yeah. um and so uh that that uh was my goal and so I, when I finished my journey I was really worried that okay I don't have another goal like that and so now what I do is I keep a list on my, on my phone of yeah. all these like kind of crazy goals not crazy but like goals that not a lot of people achieve so like obviously the marathon coming up yeah. in September I want to be able to and like very varied I want to be able to do a human flag you know where you yeah. you hang off the side oh, of yes. a pole just kind of interesting kind of little goals you know 140 kilo bench press you know all these things that yeah. like very few people achieve they I have a list of them on my phone I just want to knock oh. them off one by one because yeah. I need that kind of um that, yeah, that uh, striving yeah to to work towards a kind of a, a very tough goal in order to keep myself on track Yeah no because this is this is how we are all different like uh because there are people who are who need to have that kind of all the time like uh, for next uh, two months or you have a marathon in upcoming in September you are working towards something or you have 140 kilo bench press what is then that you every workout you might be getting closer you know what you are working towards and then in over long period of time you are able to achieve them for someone else like uh I used to I I'm from my background I used to be a professional ice hockey player yeah. I had also kind of all kind of performance based goals but at this point uh, I don't I don't need to lift uh, I had uh, like 200 kilo squats uh, but I don't need like I still enjoy lifting heavy but I don't that that's not motivating me anymore yeah. I don't I don't I don't care how much I lift I do it because I I know that it makes me feel better in the long term but yeah. i don't care about numbers or or i had a i made it up to a professional to I, as an ice hockey player and now i i feel like that i don't need to accomplish another marathon or something but for me yeah. the driving is is uh, my health actually so okay this yeah. is this is for me like i i my i my dad passed away at age of 70 and seeing that uh that he's losing his health at so young it was kind of pushed that okay this is my motivation I'm not going, I'm going to do everything I can to not end up losing my health 
so Absolutely. early or earlier. Yeah. And then this is kind of, it's funny how we have all kind of different things what motivates us and how you make yourself to take action, especially on those days when you don't feel like it. Absolutely. So that's exactly what I was going to say. You've got to know what your motivation is. Like yours yeah. was health. Mine was kind of achieving something no one thought I could mm-hmm. achieve or proving people wrong. You know, um, and if you don't know what your goal is on those days, like when it's going to get tough or you're going to have low, low motivation and you can't, you can't, you know, have that relationship to this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, yeah. this is why I'm trying to lose weight or this, you know, this is why if you don't have a why, it's going to be very difficult to, to push through the tough moments. Exactly. Or if that your why is, is not enough. Like this yeah. is this is what I, when I start with someone, I always, that is the first question, why you are actually doing it and going for your beliefs a little bit deeper to find that kind of ultimate motivation, why you are actually doing it. Because if your goal is just, uh, it's even it's an important goal to lose weight or look better when you are in your swimming pants or naked, it's it's a great goal, but it's not going to be enough for yeah. those days when you don't feel like it. But if you have that kind of deeper goal, why you are actually doing it, that's the point when you start to have that. Because that uh, it's it's uh, we are all struggling with motivation at some point, or yeah. like you said, and for me also, it's most of the days I don't enjoy naturally doing my workout, but I know I need to do it in yeah. order to feel better in the long term and uh, more consistent. You are able to do it easier it get or it's not getting easier to take that action but then it makes you feel so good that uh, it's kind of always that it's kind of that reminder of why you are doing it yes yeah exactly it's funny it's one of the things that uh, that annoys me the most and very few very little that annoys me but when i hear people say you know i just don't have the motivation that mm-hmm. drives me it drives me crazy because it's mm-hmm. not motivation like no. as you said yourself you have low motivation most days to do it i had low motivation to get off the couch you know the sofa when i was hobbling to the uh, hobbling to the bathroom or getting to bed at night you know it's not about motivation it's about building habits into a disciplined routine not everyone's yeah. motivated to get up and go to work every morning they still go. They still yeah. don't just say, oh, I don't have the motivation to work. I'm not going to go to work. Yeah. That's not what happens. And yeah. that's what you have to do if you want to like lose weight. You have, yeah. to, you have to build a habit. It's not motivation. That drives me crazy. I hear it all the time. People message me going, you know, I wish I could do what you did. I just don't have the motivation. It's not yeah. motivation. Oh, it's no. not. No, and, and this is kind of same. Like if you have like a, a children, maybe you are not motivated to be parent or take yeah. care of your kids every day, but it's your role. Like you are, you got to do it. You do best what you can. And maybe some days you are the most amazing parent and some days you are going to be okay, but you still do the best what you can. And it's just adjusting your efforts and doing the best what you can, but that motivation it will never be there. So mm-hmm. before we wrap up this episode, do you have some kind of uh, tips for someone who is uh, obese listening to this and uh, how to get started with their journey? Like you talk a lot about habits and uh, and uh, everything. So. so I think the first thing is, you know, anyone who's obese has definitely tried and failed at losing weight mm-hmm. numerous times. This isn't their first time trying mm-hmm. after listening yeah. to me. And so the most important thing you can do is analyze your failures. The last few times you tried to lose weight and it, and it didn't work, what were the triggers that occurred that made you lose the habits that you have? Find that common thread and try and create an environment where that will not get in the way anymore. That's the number one thing. After that, you can start looking at building habits slowly don't go from zero to a hundred. That is a big mistake. I know I, I went from a lot, but I went over five weeks from zero exercise to four to five hours a day. But like I had the time to do that. If you only have like an hour a day to train and before, you know, six months ago, you're losing weight and you're training like five times a week. Don't go back day one or week one and try and train five days a week straight away. Build it up. Go to the gym once. Go to the gym twice. Then the next week, try and add a session. Then the next week, try and add a session. Mm -hmm. Don't go back and try and go from zero to 100. It's such a mistake. It's a process of building and building and building and building. It's not a zero to 100. And now I'm going to maintain this speed for six months. It's like, I mean, age old cliche. It's, it's It's a marathon, not a sprint. 
like that that that's that's probably the best advice i can give to anyone trying to start awesome and those are i can't agree more love uh, if you are listening to this take that advice and uh, and uh, brian uh, you are very active in your social media if uh, as a, as you have went through this yourself um, where people can find you where if somebody mm-hmm. wants to work with you you are doing coaching so feel free to share everything you want Yeah, thanks for so I am at brianokeefe.com um and on Instagram and on all social media it's at the dot o'keefe. Um so yeah, if you need if you need help just in any help or, or advice with your weight loss I'd like I reply to anyone that messages me. So um I just love helping people lose weight. I know how much it affected my mental health. So um even if even if you don't need one-on-one coaching, if you just need some advice on how to find your calorie deficit whatever it is, feel free to reach out and message me um because uh, yeah I I love hearing people's successes as well so if you've any wins recently reach out with them as well awesome thank you so much and uh, I can only like I'm not telling it but if you are obese uh, doing it with someone who have actually went through this so Brian knows exactly what you are going through how you are going to feel it so there is not a better coach like someone who have went through through this uh, journey by himself so definitely reach out talk to him and uh, it's not that he's here for helping you and not only trying to get the most clients uh, even obviously that is his job but uh, he loves uh, helping people so reach out Brian I will add the link to show notes so thank you again for listening thank you Brian for coming to my show thanks to her I loved it really enjoyed it thank you Hold up, friend. Do you love Fit Me Tour Fitness podcast? If so, the best way to say thank you is to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review on iTunes. I know every podcaster wants you to leave a review, but it's because those reviews help the podcast to reach more people. I truly want to know what you think and if this particular episode resonated with you. Would you also please share it? Either send a link to someone who you think will find it valuable or take a screenshot and post it into your social media and tell your friends and family why they should listen it. Make sure you tag me so I can hear your feedback and give you a little love. And you know, if you aren't already following me on Instagram or TikTok, that's the perfect time to hit that follow button. Thank you for being here and listening to Fit Me to a Fitness Podcast.